Hello and welcome to Corona Crisis. My name is David Haythornthwaite and I'm the chairman of AFC Filed. And over the next uh, few weeks and months, uh, I'm hopefully going to take you through what goes on behind the scenes of a non-league football team at times like this. Uh, we're going to discuss all the issues regarding uh, behind the scenes, the players, uh, off-field staff, all the things that contribute to the to the running of the club uh, and how we're dealing with the issues that have been thrown at us on a daily and weekly basis uh, so that it gives you a really good insight to the club uh, and the running of clubs in general. So I look forward to you joining me on this journey. Okay, David, thanks for joining us once again as we continue with uh, looking behind the scenes at AFC Fylde. The, uh, the first question is, I believe you've been set a president this week. I have, yes. Uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, the, uh, the, the news came through uh, after we'd done our interview last week. We always, as you know, had to do our interviews Thursday and then sort of release it over over a period of, of the next week. Uh, we're back again on, on Thursday, aren't we? But uh, obviously, the, the, the vote sort of came through uh, on the fact that you know, Barrow had been um, had promoted, uh, and uh, you know, of course, uh, we're one of the, the, the clubs that they uh, that they love to uh, to hate, uh, and uh, in a nice way, I think. Hopefully, in a nice way. Uh, but uh, I uh, I'd been away on, on Saturday uh, down. Uh, you know, I have a house in in the Lake District, and uh, not very far from. Uh, from Barrow in actual fact, probably about uh, about 20 miles. And therefore, I think in that sort of, uh, in those villages and around where I live, uh, there, uh, there must be, uh, I assume there's some, bring it up here, Lucy, if you would, there's some, uh, excuse me, let's get my coffee, thank you. Uh, there are some, some Barrow, uh, obviously some Barrow supporters, and uh, somehow we can spread through that, you know, that's, that's where I live. Uh, so they've sort of found my house and uh, so when I arrived home on, on Saturday uh, I had to laugh because I've got sort of two gate posts that drive into my house and, and, and perfectly placed over uh, one of the gate posts was a, was a barrel scarf and uh, with obviously the obligatory 2022 uh, written on it and uh, I've scribbled out to, to read 2042 uh, which is their way of having a, having a joke about our 2022. So uh, it was uh, it put a put a smile on my face, and I always I always like someone who's got a bit of creativity. So whoever did it, uh, well done. Uh, it was uh, it gave me a, gave me a good laugh. Thank you. And you mentioned we've got that. That's the side of football. Let's get the banter side of it. Yeah, of course it is. It's uh, you know that's what it's football's about, isn't it? The banter. With, with, without that, I mean, we've seen that you know in in, in a full time. Uh, in a big game, it's just singing backwards and forwards, and you know the banter between the crowd. We've we missed that, haven't we, on, uh, on, on the football uh, since since they've been back in the Premier League. Uh, they, they've tried to mimic the crowd. I think they've done a reasonable job, but uh, no, you miss that banter, and and certainly uh, you know at our level, uh, you know when you put that on your shirt, uh, you, you, you know you're going to take a little bit of stick, and you've got to you've got to you know take the rough with the smooth sometimes. So I have no problem with that. Right, and uh, so one person there that we do need to speak about, you mentioned him previously, was Jake Simpson, but Jake, Jake departs over the coming days. Um, we, will, we will manage to catch up with Jake and speak to him about what he's been up to this month, but, yeah. uh, but I know you obviously, you'd like to say a few words as well. Yeah, well Jake was uh, you know, one of those guys who's, uh, when I say we, you know, we went to, as, a, as a club, uh, you know, as you progress through the leagues, as, as, as you progress uh, on the field and off the field, uh, you're always trying to improve, uh, you, you know, in, in every in every aspect. And uh, Jake was someone that Dave Challey brought in a couple of years ago. Uh, I think it's fair to say he was our first sort of strength and, and conditioning coach we had. We didn't have one before Jake, uh, and uh, you know it was it was something I I, I must admit I I kind of questioned at the time. I was just oh, oh, strength and friendly. You know, I mean, we are professional, but we're in the National League, not the Premier League. So, uh, you know, it did occur to me that it might be 
shall we say a luxury, a, a maybe a, I've got to have a strength and conditioning coach to be a real team sort of thing. Uh, but I have to say is that, you know, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Jake quickly, uh, you know, showed his worth to the club and, uh, you know, getting everybody on the right days, getting the, uh, you know, the, 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 the information that the manager needs to know to help him be successful. Uh, all the stats, all the data. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's, he's done a great and he's, he's, you know, he's a young lad making his way in the world. It's, uh, I don't know why he's 23, 24, is he something like that? Maybe a bit older. But, you know, he's, he, he's great. He's been able to come to file. And I've said many a time, like lots and lots of people, you know, we are stepping stone, hopefully, to greatness. You know, whether that's a manager, a centre forward, a goalkeeper, if they can come here, and it's a step up from where he come from, or it's the first job, which I think with Jake, it was his first real job on that road. Uh, hopefully, we, we help him progress, and, uh, and I know, you know he's, he's done a good job, and uh, you know, I wish him all the best uh, wherever he decides and wherever he ends up. I, I think he's had a, an offer. I heard someone told me the other day he's had an offer to, I think, to go to Hartlepool. Whether that's going to happen, I hear there's. Uh, Know, carnage everywhere at the moment as we've talked about I, I did read something on, on the Hartlepool website that I think four or five of their best players have, have been let go uh, I'm sure they're not let go because they wanted to let them go but because obviously the wages that they're now offering there was something yesterday that I read uh, and I've sort of had recently confirmed that Blackpool uh, had asked their players uh, to take a 60% pay cut, 60 not 16, 60% pay cut uh, against, you know, future contract and a lot of them would be leaving. So those kind of things that we've talked about, Adam, uh, you know, are, are starting to uh, starting to filter through now. So uh, if he does up, end up at Hartlepool, you know, I wish him, uh, I wish him all the best and, and wherever he ends up. But uh, it may be that, uh, you know, strength and conditioning coaches unfortunately uh, will be you know one of the first jobs that gets cut when you decide i mean ultimately if you've got a football club and you cut to the bare bones you need a manager and a physio and you can manage with that, that, that those are the facts if you don't need a manager and a physio you could manage all the others become additions uh and so jake may may, may find it a little bit harder that's not the reason we've let him go as i've said uh, and, and certainly uh, you know if we stay in a national league, which is looking a lot less likely, and then uh, we, we'll we'll go with a strength and conditioning coach. But, but if we get relegated, we won't we won't be able to afford that luxury. So that, that's the kind of balancing and what happens when you get relegated, or potentially you know, the changes what you can afford, how you have to to uh, discipline yourself and that. And we can hear from him now. Good. Jake, you're in your last week with the club, um, I think the chairman and other members of staff have been very vocal that they're, they're sad to be losing you. Um, and we just want to look back at some, some memories that you have from during your time here. So, can you sort of sum up your time at the club, please? Yeah, I mean, it's been a, a quick couple of years, a strange ending to it all, I guess, and what's gone on recently. But from day one, um, you can see what, what this club wants to do, where it wants to go, and that was a big reason that I came here in the first place. Uh, as soon as you arrive at Mill Farm, you can see the, the sort of ambition and the quality of the facilities that are here. Um, and again, on, on the pitch side of things, I think last year was obviously very close to getting the, the ultimate goal of, of achieving the Football League. But in the meantime, we had some great memories last year, some brilliant games, brilliant performances, silverware to finish it off. Um, and unfortunately, as far as the league goes, we were just one one step short. Um, this season on the pitch, I think it's quite clear to see it hasn't quite gone to plan. Um, but again, as an environment to work in, um, obviously I was brought to the club under Shally um, and then worked with Jim and his staff. And to a man, they've all been absolutely brilliant. I've loved every minute of it. Um, and I've been very open and honest with Jim during my, my decision making. Um, and what I'm doing is no reflection on any person that I've worked with um, at the football club at this time. Um, so now I've had some great memories, some brilliant days, more so last year, not going to lie, but again, coming into the environment to work with these sort of people has, has been brilliant for me. And if you could, it's always a tough question, and I'm sure there'll be quite a few, but give us one overall memory from 
from start to finish there might have been a specific game where you woke up that morning and you know you felt good all day and not sure I woke up the next day feeling great but um Again, obviously the FA Trophy final was brilliant, and the one that actually stands out more so is probably the Solihull win uh, in the playoffs, um, getting back to the ground. And I think myself and Luke at the time had a few too many uh, drinks to celebrate, but that that was where you really got a feeling that there was something special going on with that group. Um, as I said, unfortunately we didn't quite get across the line on the day. We all admit Salford were just were just better than us. Um, but that was one one day I sort of really had to sort of you sort of pinch yourself and go I'm going to Wembley. We've just won in the playoffs, um, and there was a really really good feeling about the place. So I have to say, as much as the trophy and having a, a medal to show for it was was obviously a, something I'll have for the rest of my career. I do think that day coming home from Solihull, everyone was in was in a really good place. It's very easy for for me to say amongst many others, oh, Jake does fitness. What does your role actually entail? Um, again, my job title is the strength and conditioning coach, so I'm responsible for making sure our team are one, available for selection, and two, ready to perform physically at the best of their abilities. Um, I guess, again, there's been some very nice comments made by lots of people, and they are greatly appreciated because I'm working at an, at an elite level and to be sort of appreciated in that sense it has been really good and nice to hear if you like. Um, but yeah, I think as a whole my job kind of entails a little bit more. Um, I'm sure the lads will tell, tell you I'm the one who gives them all the plans, pesters them to be at a certain place at a certain time. Um, but again, I kind of try and help out in every way possible um, and whether that's be organising the WhatsApp group, whether it's organising meal times, whether it's making sure everyone understands the session for the day and make sure they know where they need to be and keeping everyone all on the same page, linking up the management team and the players. Um, again, I've kind of just approached the job as trying to help out um, this at the level we're at. Um, you don't have staff for staff's sake. You, you run quite a tight ship in terms of staff. Um, and everyone, again, everyone I've worked with, we all sort of cover all bases, we all try and make sure that this, this football club was, was working as fluidly and as efficiently as possible and um, I guess I was part of that process and speaking to the lads and keeping them all organised. David told us that when you first came in and Charlie brought you in, when he heard the term strength and conditioning coach he thought it was a bit of a luxury but he said he very very quickly realised how much of an important role you were playing within the club so that must make me feel great in the sense of you came in and started a department and it's now viewed so highly. No, that's it. Like I say, um, it is quite a new concept, strength and conditioning, sports science, been around at the top level um, for, for quite a few years. Um, but again, it, it's worked its way down and, and people see the importance of it. Um, again, a lot of people talk about the 1%, the little, little differences that people can make and I think that's Although that's a part of my job, it's making sure we actually get all the basics right as well and the players are fit, strong and can deal with because what they're being asked to deal with is quite a lot um, and they need to make sure their body is ready for that. Um, so again, like I say it is, it is quite a new concept in relation to how long football has been about um, and again my job was to prove that this job is, is worth having and having someone in the club who, who can sort of tick all these boxes and make sure that the manager has a fit, strong and healthy squad to pick from. And I'm sure you will agree, none of us could have predicted the season would end in this way. But should we have been allowed to finish it, we confident in the fact that the results were improving? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to say now in hindsight, but again, from the times under Charlie when we were struggling, when Jim came in and we had a bit of a pick up and then we sort of tailed off a little bit, I always, always remained confident in the group of players we had. Uh, anyone who's been to our games will know how tight a lot of them were. We were coming out on the wrong end, and over time, that that doesn't become luck. That that's because of, of obviously where we were, and we deserve to be where we are in the table. However, I fully have confidence in the group of players that we had at this football club. And again, the games just before we actually went into lockdown, uh, two wins and a draw, one of which against one of the top teams in the league. We sort of had seen a little bit, a bit of momentum being built. Um, again, unfortunately, we'll never be able to to prove my confidence. Um, and again, all I can say is, from knowing the group of people, the group of players, the staff who were working day in day out, I fully believe this football club would have survived, and I think we would have done it with a couple of weeks to spare, looking at our fixtures. 
and looking ahead, we still don't know what division we'll be in and obviously sadly you won't be here, but I'm sure you'll be watching from afar and you know the players better than pretty much anyone yeah. at the club at the minute. Just, I'm sure you back them to, to bounce back, whatever. Yeah, I mean, the, the quality, I don't think you can deny the quality that's at the club. For whatever reason this season, it hasn't quite clicked. It hasn't quite worked in a way that everyone sort of hoped and, and wished for. Um, but again, those players don't lose the quality. Um, and again, the old form is temporary saying comes to mind when these lads will, they're itching to get back. They want to be back playing football. I still speak to them on a daily, weekly basis, touching base with them, checking out they're all getting on. Because again, these are people that I, I consider as friends, the people that I want to see do well. Um, and again, nobody wants to see what seemingly could happen to the football club happen. Um, and especially not when you then consider it on a personal level and the effect it has on people's careers, livelihoods. So look, I, I want the best for everyone. Uh, who I've worked with at the club um, and again I guess we'll have to wait for confirmation but um, I've got no doubts that the quality in this, this football club will show uh, and they'll soon be back to where, where they want to be. And we all know you put a real shift in over, over your time here but you were never going to be let go without uh, one last project so yeah. you, you're surely due to depart but what have you been working on recently? So now I've been touching base with John T uh, mainly during lockdown just to, to keep a track on one where the players are because ultimately they can't just down tools what the start we had to, to work out if we were going to replay and uh, that soon became clear we weren't so the next thing was to plan the off-season stuff so earlier on in lockdown it was sort of prioritised that we made sure the players were in a position to have all the correct training ready for the off-season um, and we did a little maintenance program at the first early part but now more so this month uh, the I guess the, the priority has become this handover process, um, me passing on the information that I feel the club needs to have, um, a little bit of showing where we've come from in the last two years, because um, again, somebody new will come in, I'm told, and they'll have their own ideas, they'll have their own way of working, and the, I guess the, the good thing in what I do is there's plenty of ways to work, there's plenty of ways to get people fit, get people strong, so they'll have their own in, influence on, on the, the, the department. Um, but all of my, my job has been is to one, show what we've done um, and then there'll be some bits that I know Jim wants to keep in place uh, and then finally um, has been this uh, project that's ongoing um, to again take the club to the next level and that's in building a gym so it's been a good little project for me, I've enjoyed it, having a little look around, seeing what, what people do, seeing what other clubs at our level, above our level are doing because um, again from day one of me coming in it's been clear that this wants to be a, a top level club um, and to do that um, they've now noticed that we need to get the the facilities in check in terms of a gym no one can doubt the stadium and the, the surrounding areas but we are missing one key point um, and that's a gym so I put my plans to John T yesterday um, and again it's, it's sort of down to, down to the club now to see how they want to approach it and how they want to, to make that look try to name it Jake's gym as a legacy. <laughs> I'm not sure that'll sell very well but no I say it's all it's all just to help out and um, again my big thing is that I wanted to leave on good terms because I've loved loved working here and um, and again to do that I've got to fulfill my role um, and, and do what's right so I, I believe I've given the best advice I can um, and hopefully they, they can see that sort of come to come to light in the next year or so. I think I speak on behalf of everyone and say be a huge loss to the club and we wish you all the very best in the future. Thank you appreciate that.